Greetings, dear ones. I am Kryon of Magnetic Service. My partner does step aside. He has to. The pineal opens in a certain way and the humans have to get used to having the filters removed. The filters are humanism. If the filters are in place and the human being does not step fully aside, the messages will come through their filters and their consciousness. And this is how you would recognize the channeling as being pure or not. If it appears that the human being is combined with the channel and the expressions and the countenance are still of that human, you know what you're listening to. It's a partial channel. And sometimes that is the way of it and that is the way the human being needs to channel in order for it to be comfortable for them. But the purest of the channels are the ones when there is no filter at all. That is difficult and it takes practice. Sometimes the human will step in and out, even during channel. The filter will be there and then it will be removed. And this is a channel who is practicing. And so we give you this information because it applies to your everyday life. When you are in a position to practice your intuitive self, Take the filter away. The filter will tell you what your brain wants you to hear instead of that which is coming through the pineal, which is pure intuitive thought. It is this practice which will pay off with a pure intuitive communication, which will then bring about a clearer, much clearer combination and confluence of what we would call life energy giving you permission to be in the right place at the right time. I celebrate this time with you, dear ones. Now there are those listening to this. And then there are those in the room. And again, I tell you, I speak to all of you at the same time, for I see you listening, dear one. It is not a mystery who after the fact may wish to hear this message. You're in a new energy and this has been the subject. And we have told you some amazing things that only time will prove. And it is appropriate for that is how we started. 23 years ago when my partner first opened his mouth or put it on paper and gave those who wanted to hear it what Crying would say. The messages we gave then are the messages that we now complete. When we say there would be no Armageddon and there was none. We looked at the potentials of a World War III and we said there would be none. We gave you messages that were not fortune telling but were based upon that which the indigenous of the planet all knew and the prophecies were starting to come about. And so we sit here now in this new energy and I give you the same kind of message based upon the potential that we see happening and not what might happen. We have told you that you are starting to recalibrate even human nature. If you're in that which is esoteric belief, metaphysics or what some call the new age, we have given you information about what is changing and given you the inv invitations to step out of old practices that are not going to help the planet. Some of the news has been difficult for you, difficult for us, for it starts to rewrite the reality you thought you had. So here is a message of benevolent celebration and help. I want to give you information. Some of it, again, is controversial. We would not say the things we're going to say unless there was truth behind it and purity within its intent. We want to talk about fast tracking 
And that in itself is a very difficult subject. For you'd have to understand and know far more about the help that is around humanity than you do now. If you are just listening to this for the first time, you have missed a tremendous amount of information that would be background that would lead you to understanding and clarity of this message. I would invite you to back up and listen to some of the messages or read some of the messages at the beginning of this year. You're moving into an energy that is going to support you. You're moving from an energy that never supported you. It really is moving from a dark to a light. And the metaphor is complete. And this is, this is what the prophecy always was. And the indigenous knew it. All centered around what has been called the wobble of the earth or the precession of the equinoxes. And if you do the mathematics and the astronomy, you will see that there is an 18 year window from now to the end of that precession that is critical. 18 years. This is the second of the 18. This is the structure year. And what we mean by that is this is the year where you plant the seeds. This is the year where you start figuring out what to do. This is the year where you, where you start to have a confluence of understanding, which means you connect the dots. And so we're going to tell you about some of the things on the planet that are going to help you and in the process giving you some admonitions of things not to fear. Fast tracking. That's when that around you helps to push the envelope of benevolence in your favor. We have given the descriptions of the grid systems of the planet and told you they were all benevolent help. This very day, my partner has given you the nine attributes of the human being, the explanations, and you can see in all that structure, there is benevolent physics. There is a consciousness of help. Even the chemistry of your body is starting to align to heal itself better than it ever has before. The three people in this audience need to hear that to know they're okay and not to fear. For even that which is your cellular structure is starting to respond to a new energy. We keep using the word benevolence. It's the only, it's the only word we have to describe a system that knows who you are and is your friend. And against all odds, it works with you. It is not an average system where you hook onto it occasionally and get something good. It's not a system that is against you where you have to fight it. This is a system that knows your name. And for the first time in human history, sees you moving toward a goal which will unify humanity eventually. This has been the cry on message for 23 years. The messages have been cryptic up to now because you had to pass the marker and that's the reality, is it not? We could talk about the future. We could tell you where you were going. We could say there would be no final war. But there was always the fear because of the prophecies you'd had in the past that there would be one. All the misinformation about what was going to happen in 2012 brought to you by those who would market things. You had to get through that. No words from crying would ever, would ever pierce that fear as much as the clock would allow for realization when it did not happen. And here you sit in a new energy. But you look around the planet and you see things that are fearful, frightening. You look into the solar system, you see things perhaps which are fearful and frightening. And I want to tell you, it's part of fast tracking. So let us start and allow you to connect the dots and give you things that may seem like they're bad news, but they're not. Spirit knows how humanity must work itself. Spirit understands how humanity must work puzzles. Would appear to be negative old energy. And what's happening is that through the puzzles you're working, you start to clear energy. Some puzzles are difficult. 
We're going to give you five attributes of fast tracking on the planet. We'll be concise. Number one, political strife. How could political strife around this planet be associated with fast tracking benevolent energy? And this is where I want you to suspend a linear belief system where you think you know how things work. There are wars right now, but they have something in common and they are different from before. There are wars right now and those being killed and we're greeting them on our side of the veil. And we can tell you about the horror in certain countries. But it's not country against country, dear ones. Did you notice? None of them are, dear ones. Did you notice? Instead, they are intra-country wars. They are citizens warring with one another about what they want for their governments and what their countries will become. And they are in places you never expected, did you? You never expected certain ones to erupt because of the strength of their government to keep them from erupting or others that seem to be westernized and benevolent and they're erupting. And it's going to happen more. And you're going to see those you, you didn't expect to erupt. And what it is, is for the first time many countries with their own populations deciding that they want something better. It's not about correcting corruption. It's not about coups where one set of greedy po po politicians then just replace another. That is not what it's about. It's about improving the lives of the everyday citizen. We've told you in the Middle East that there are some things cooking there as well and they may surprise you when they take place. It's all about common individuals starting to see that they could have a better country, a better government that includes good things for themselves, hospitals and schools. The chance for them to move ahead where they cannot now. The things that all humans want. So political strife is a fast track. It pushes the envelope of energy, you might say, and makes things happen instead of sitting there being static for another generation or two and not changing. And that's number one. So some of you will take this information and say, well, Cryon says it's good. <laughs> the people would be killed. And that's not what I said. I'm telling you that the human condition is known. How you work your puzzles is known and a fast track is for you to finally wake up and certain citizens in a country realize it isn't working. And sometimes it's peaceful and sometimes it's not. And that's number one. Fast tracking through political strife. Number two is something we have not talked about yet. And it has to do with a change, a recalibration in Akashic remembrance. Now we've not talked about this because it hasn't been time to talk about this. My partner has a recalibration book. And as I speak of this right now, he is lamenting the fact that I did not mention it earlier so it could be in his book. <laughs> it wasn't time. It's the recalibration of how your Akashic remembrance is going to work in the future. Let us look at how it's worked in the past. Akashic remembrance, you will call past life energies, has given you puzzles. And in the past, it has given you things to work out. So energies would come from your past lives, things that remembered that were dramatic. Bad deaths, drowning, battle, death of your children. And you carry them into this life and you're afraid. And they affect what you do. 
And so you will go to a past life reader whose job it is to heal those things in your life, to have you see them and drop your fear. So it is something that you help facilitate away. And overwhelmingly, it's been about old energy things that you have to work through. Ask a past life regressor what they do most. And they will say they try to solve the problems of the past life energies creating fear in a present life. And I want to tell you, dear human being, old soul, that that is about to change. It is true, is it not? And we have told you that the crystalline grid is recalibrating. And if you'll take a look at the words and the past information, it is starting to remember differently. And so is your Akash. Your Akash is going to start bringing up some of the best experiences you've ever had. It'll help you redefine love. It's going to help you to understand who you are. Yes, dear ones, it'll tell you you're a Lemurian. Mm -hmm. And you are. Your soul isn't old enough? <laughs> Who told you that? That is your own self-worth doubting your magnificence. It is a very old soul. It wouldn't sit in this room if it were not. It wouldn't. You don't find young souls sitting in these kinds of meetings because they would not understand anything that is being said. Your kosh is realigning itself to give you remembrances that are going to help you push into a benevolent energy using the things and the tools that you need, not obstacles that you have to get around. How about that? Some of you are going to start having dreams, the old souls, and you're going to start seeing masters. You're going to levitate. <laughs> you're going to have colors all in your dreams, and you won't know what they mean. You're going to wake up, and you're going to smile when you wake up because they felt good. And that replaces just the opposite that so many of you have, old soul, I know who's here. Do you realize some of the horrors you've been through? Do you know what is etched into your Akash that gives you lack of self-worth? I want you to start understanding this is going to start moving into the positive. And you don't have to be reborn into a new lifetime for this to occur. You've crossed the marker and you deserve it now. And that's number two. The way the Akash delivers remembrance to you is going to flip into the positive and not give you problems, but it's going to give you solutions and also suggestions and maybe even some inventions. That was number two. Number three, difficult to talk about. Because there's so much fear. Gaia is recalibrating itself for benevolence. And it's not going to let you spoil it. And here's where it gets controversial. There is so much fear over some of the things that have taken, taken place just recently and may take place in the future. Environmentalists will cringe at this message. We have told you to stop polluting the ocean. We've told you to stop polluting the air. But that is a message that crying does not have to give, really. It's self-evident. And humanity is starting to see it. That's not a cryon subject. The cryon subject is this. I want you to understand that the very oceans of this planet are far more resilient than you have any idea of. And it's been shown to you before and you're still afraid. What happens when a nuclear plant melts down and pours into the ocean? The first thing is a message. Did you get it? Nuclear power is not your safest option. <laughs> and that is a message. It's a very clear message. And when you thought it was a safe option, 
We say that again, it is the most expensive steam engine known to man. That's what a nuclear plant is. And it can be done in other ways. Geothermal is the way. You have got unlimited heat below your feet. And all you have to do is fund the ways to get around the challenges to get it that deep. And you can do it. That's the message. But in the process, you're polluting the ocean with radioactivity. There's fear here. What's it going to do? Should you eat the fish? Is it going to circulate around the ocean? Is it safe to swim? I want to tell you, dear ones, that the ocean is far more resilient than you ever, ever thought. I want you to go back with me and think about something. In the infancy of your nuclear weapon design and testing, what humanity decided to do was to explode hydrogen bombs that were very large in the ocean. <laughs> do you remember? And there were pictures. And the amount of radiation that was poured at that time into the ocean was massive compared to what just happened in Japan. Now I ask you, do you swim in that ocean? Do you eat the fish? And what happened? What happened? And I will give you a hint. Gaia is more resilient than you think. And there are ways of neutralizing and changing you have no idea about. And it's already happened one time. Can you not see that and figure it out? And not be afraid. Be circumspect. Take a look at what is going on and stay away from the hot areas as measured. But understand the ocean is going to work it out. I want to give you another fact just to think about because I was here a long time. <laughs> there was a time before you were here when the oceans were constantly having oil spills. Guess where they came from? They came from oil fields beneath the ocean surface that ruptured and would spill unbelievable amounts of oil naturally from the ocean floor. By the way, that's where you drill for it now. So figure it out and connect the dots. Spill after spill after spill after spill. And there was no ships around spilling oil. And where is it today? And did it ruin the environment? And the answer is no. And what happened to it? There is a system and there always has been where the ocean scrubs itself and takes care of this in ways that you don't know. Figure it out and connect the dots. You are not the first ones to spill oil in the ocean. It's a natural occurrence. Ask a geologist what's down there. Ask a geologist right now if there are spills bubbling up. And there are. It's a natural occurrence. The ocean knows about it, recognizes it, and takes care of it. You know what's happening with the weather? We gave it to you last time. There's a mini, mini ice age coming. We told you that. Don't fear it. Just understand it's going to get colder. That's part of a remedial action that the ocean, temperature of the ocean is cooling. It's changing. That is part of a life cycle that has to be renewed. It's also part of a cleanup. I'm giving you information. It may take a generation for scientists to see it, admit it, and go, oh, gee whiz, look at that. And when they do, I want you to remember the day when you heard it from me. The planet is fast-tracking by cleaning itself up. Meanwhile, don't pollute the ocean. Don't pollute the air. But understand that you have got a consciousness in Gaia that is a friend of humanity and sees what's going on and is working the issue with you. Is that clear? That was number three. There's only two more. I want to tell you about something that's happening in your galaxy and it's fearful. Your solar system moves around the center of the galaxy at the same speed all the other stars do. We have called that revs or revolutions around the middle. It takes millions of years for one rev. So all of humanity has not even seen one rev. 
you are moving constantly into new areas of space because you circle the middle of your galaxy. So if you thought it was static and that your solar system is always in the same space, you haven't figured it out. It's always circling. And the area of space that it is about to move into is different from where it's been and it's on target and it's right on time. You're moving into another kind of radiation. It's going to affect your sun. You're already starting to see it. The meteorologists are reporting it. It's part of the shift in the weather. The radiant cycle of the sun itself will be different. The amount of sunspots will be different because the radiation that you are moving into as a solar system you've never seen before. Not as humans. And you're afraid. And you're looking at it and some are saying this is the end. Others are saying it's going to be dangerous. And here's what I'm going to tell you. This radiation is going to move right into your magnetic grid and it's going to change your DNA and you're going to get another 10% <laughs> of efficiency. It's right on time. It's right on schedule. It's a benevolent physics that knew what you were doing. Are you understanding this? What others will fear is going to be your evolution of consciousness. And if you haven't tuned in to previous messages, you won't understand anything I said. But what is going on is a benevolent system, radiation that will change things that will happen naturally to you and increase that, which is the functionality of the very DNA in your body. It's a system. We knew you were coming, kind of a system. And that was number four. The fifth and the final one we have covered before. But I will tell you that it is eminent. Our clock is not your clock. We see this coming. And when it does, you might say, well, it took longer than I thought. <laughs> longer is not a word we understand. We just know it's coming. And so the timing, as you would say, is not anything that we are aware of. We know about your clock. We see how you are impatient because things don't happen on a schedule that is in three dimensions. But what difference is it? It will arrive when it arrives and you're going to be here. Now, some of you may not be the same age or the same gender, but you'll be here. <laughs> what difference does it make? You're going to see it. And it's invention. When a planet moves into what we would call a fast track, inventions start to even increase beyond what you thought was high technology. But the technology you are about ready to receive is beyond three-dimensional technology and it will be quantum technology and it starts slow. But just like the evolution of so many inventions you've had and technology that you've had in the past, it has a ramp up that is slow at first and then lightning fast in the end. One thing leads to another, starts to show something else. And I will give it to you one more time. Planets who move into ascension status must, must have an eventuality of understanding quantum energy. And the beginning of understanding quantum energy is the ability to measure it and see it. Even if you cannot produce it or alter it, or work with it, you've got to be able to see it. Can you imagine a painter trying to paint a beautiful canvas and he has all the colors in front of him, but he's blind? <laughs> I want to tell you, that's exactly where you are right now. <laughs> all the colors are there and they've always been there. And when you can see 
quantum energy in any form you will start to understand how to see it in a better form and when you start to see it in a better form you will see the patterns contained in it and when you start seeing those you will have a million questions that cannot be answered but it will start a progress of invention as you discover one thing after another of what you're seeing that you never saw before and the colors will be outstanding and that is a metaphor for second sight this is a fast track because it's going to start to create questions you have never pondered as a human race can you imagine such a thing just when you thought you had everything figured out <laughs> it's going to bring physics into a brand new perspective and you will see the missing laws you'll be able to manipulate eventually the very things you think you are a victim of these are the gifts of an ascension planet as they go forward I will close with this dear human being you are still with free choice you can change this you can bring it backwards and you can cancel it if you want came in 23 years ago and what I saw then without a clock is you sitting here today <laughs> in other words what I see in 20 years is the same kind of thing the potentials are there that you cannot see that are already beginning on this planet get ready for medicine to change forever get ready for the elimination of one kind of healing and the opening of another get ready for intelligent quantum healing to occur I have no way of describing to you a healing it's not a process my partner don't say that word a healing paradigm that you cannot see you cannot imagine but that marries you and the innate intelligence of your body with the ability to imprint itself and heal itself using its own data in its own DNA that's as far as I can go <laughs> can you imagine explaining the internet to a society that doesn't have electricity <laughs> and that is why it's hard to give you what is what is there so clearly you still have free choice but the potentials are already rolling toward benevolence and solution and peace when the countries finally settle on what they want and have leaders that will implement what they want collectively they will not need to erupt ever again and so there is a settling and a shakeout in so many areas right now it's fast tracking it's helping you get to the next stage quicker than you would have by yourself because you are surrounded with help the very earth itself and the personality you know as Gaia and mother nature smiles right now and looks at you and said you deserve it and we're here all of the things that I've said today are true and so in closing is this real <laughs> has the message touched you have you felt what else is happening in the room have you just been listening to words or has there been another energy that is circling around holding your hand perhaps hugging you if you let it saying listen 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 old soul the time you ask for has arrived now do something with it don't let it just sit there don't be entertained by it 
be part of it.